O Lord, grant that thy spirit may come through the crowded ways of our thoughts to illumine our hearts and souls and minds through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We just heard the deacon read one of the toughest passages in the Gospels in the sense that it's been used as a mockery of Christianity, not just this denomination, but many, because it's right there in the Bible. This is not just a prayer book. It's right there in the Bible. These are Jesus's words. And I remember growing up in school where some people had heard enough of the Bible that this could be used as mockery. It got worse when I got to college and graduate school. People would make jokes about how Christianity was fundamentally carnivorous. And I never had a good response to this, and I didn't even try. But I didn't deny it was in the Bible. I didn't want to try to turn it into a debate because I'm quite sure that one would lose a debate with someone who is set at taking these words literally and not figuratively. But I've held on to this difficulty as your music director for 30 years now. And there are a number of hymns that I don't program simply because I program hymns that I believe in. I always study the words before I program a hymn. If you turn back a couple of pages, you'll see such a hymn that I have never played here and never will. Bread of heaven, on thee we feed, for thy flesh is meat indeed. There it is. <laughs> And I'll admit, for some people, this hymn is probably meaningful, but it isn't for me, and I'm paid to be a kind of proctor of the words we sing, and the words that appear in a hymn are, in that sense, to me, bad hymnology. And as I've struggled with this passage, I found a great solace in the poetry of a Welsh poet and priest in the 17th century. His name was George Herbert. Those of you that stuck with Peter and me through the pandemic when we were recording music and prayers here week after week have heard other poetry of Father George Herbert. I recorded one called The Call, Come My Way, My Truth, My Life. It's in the hymnal, in a kind of simplified version from its original. Then around Easter, I sang for you, um, Rise, Heart, Thy Lord is Risen. It's called Easter. It's perfect for Easter. And then there was another one that I sang for Easter called, I Brought Me Flowers to Strew Thy Way. But the poem that's the real stunner in this particular collection, which was published in 1633 in a book called The Temple, is a poem that I'd like to share with you today because it speaks to this gospel passage and to all of the sections in the prayer book, both right one and right two and other places where we hear about Jesus as the flesh and the blood. This poem creates a kind of dreamscape in which a soul, presumably Father George Herbert's soul, goes into a room and the room is not described in any particular way. It's a dream, and of course, in dreams, things can be rather vague. But the point of it is that love is sitting in the room. And it is pretty obvious, as one reads the poem, that this love 
<clears throat> spelled with a capital L. This isn't romantic love. This is the big one. It's Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, <clears throat> but if I wandered into a room and Jesus were sitting there in any guise, <clears throat> I think my first reaction would be to say, oh, excuse me, I walked into the wrong room. I don't belong here. And that's exactly what Father George's soul says. But Jesus welcomes him into the room. And they engage in a dialogue. The dialogue <clears throat> is basically Father George Herbert saying, I don't deserve to be here. And Jesus saying, oh, yes, you do. So he says, no, I'm, I'm filled with dust and sin. Dust being those sins of omission and sin sin being the dust of commission. Jesus won't have any of it. He says, no. And then the soul says, I can't even look at you. I know that feeling. When I feel as if I don't belong, when I don't deserve, I don't even feel I can look someone in the eye. And Jesus said, who made the eyes but I? And Father George keeps on arguing with Jesus and say, truth, Lord, but I have marred them. Let my shame go where it doth deserve. Now, the shame he feels is obstructing him from doing what Jesus is offering him, which is a place at a table. There's a table right there. And how many of us approach a sacrament feeling as if we don't deserve it? And maybe even run out of the room. Pull away from both the gospel and the poem for a moment and think about it as grace. Think about it as a gift from a higher power. You don't even need to believe in Jesus. You don't even need to believe in God. You can just call him a higher power. It's something wonderful, which in this case is called love, which is offered to you. And you turn away from it because you don't feel worthy. And what Father George is saying in this poem, I believe, is go ahead and struggle with me, but I still welcome you, sinful as you seem to feel you are. And eventually, the soul relents and agrees to sit down and eat this feast. Now, this poem was well received as great English literature, but it made a huge leap in public consciousness 200 years, roughly 200 years later when the 20th century's greatest English composer, Ralph Vaughan Williams, got his hands on the poetry of Father George Herbert. And he set these poems to music. Now, Ralph Vaughan Williams may not be a household word to you. He is revered in music literature as one of the greatest setters of English poetry who ever lived, and certainly in the 20th century. He took that poem and turned it into a little opera scene in which the soul and love have this dialogue, but he added another dimension to it. And that is when Jesus offers him to sit down at this table, Von Williams adds an element which could elude us because we don't know this tune, but he did. It's a Latin hymn called O Sacrum Convivium, O Sacred Banquet. And it's a hymn that refers to what you will soon be doing here. The song, O Sacrum Convivium, is never sung as the singer sings his song or her song, 
but a choir, if there is one, hums it in the background. We're going to sing you this song this morning, and the piano will play this melody. When the melody comes, I'll gesture at the piano so you don't miss it. Unfortunately, it's not in our hymn book. So there's no way you would know this song. But as the soul finally relents and sits down at the table and communes with Jesus, that hymn comes in. Now here's the stunner. Vaughn Williams was a proclaimed atheist. In 1911, he died in 1958. In 1911, he was a staunch proclaimer of atheism. And yet, he really got the point of this. What I'm saying is if you get high enough over the details, the blood and the and the flesh, and think about grace. This is something that Vaughan Williams felt he could share with humanity, even though he didn't believe in Christianity. Later in his life, when he was very old, he changed his tune and said, well, now I'm a friendly agnostic. <laughs> in spite of all that, he's buried in Westminster Abbey. <laughs> along with Henry Purcell and all the other greats of Christian music. And you owe this atheist a debt of gratitude because you sing so many hymns that he wrote. Probably the biggie is on all saints, for all the saints who from their labors rest. That's only one. Throughout the year, if Vaughn Williams hadn't done this hymn writing, we wouldn't have as rich a tradition in this denomination as we do. All thanks to an atheist. Isn't that strange? Grace came to us through someone who didn't believe in God. Well, maybe that's not quite true. Now, if you'll just bear with me for a second, I have to set up. I'm going to sing you this. But knowing Episcopalians, as I do, they always like to read along. They like to see the words. So on the back of your bulletin, you will see this poem. And I'd like to make sure that you absorb this before I sing it. Love bade me welcome, yet my soul drew back guilty of dust and sin. But quick-eyed love, observing me grow slack from my first entrance in, drew nearer to me, sweetly questioning if I lacked anything. A guest, I answered, worthy to be here. Love said, you shall be here. I, the unkind, ungrateful, oh, my dear, I cannot look on me. Love took my hand and smiling did reply, who made the eyes but I? Truth, Lord, but I have marred them. Let my shame go where it doth deserve. And know you not, says love, who bore the blame? My dear, then I will serve. You must sit down, says love, and taste my meat. So, I did sit and eat. Now here's what Vaughn Williams goes to that poem. Hang on, just for a minute. 